My name is Brad Moore. I was born and raised here in Johnson County, grew up in Overland Park and Prairie Village, attended KU, graduated from Shawnee Mission South High School, uh, got a degree in architecture, uh, pursued, knew by third grade that I wanted to be an architect, and I think what uh, set that off was my parents giving me my first Lego set which I still have down in the basement, believe it or not. And it gave me uh, a chance to really express a lot of creative freedom, but what it also did is it got me interested in making small objects. Uh, Lego is perfectly suited for that kind of thing. Uh, so you, next thing I knew, by the time I was in junior high, I started making little houses, small office buildings out of Legos. It, I think what really set me on the road to uh, discovery of uh, a love of miniatures and miniaturization is when we went to Walt Disney World when I was in fifth grade and I rode uh, Peter Pan's Magical Flight. And if there are any of you who have never been on that ride before, it is amazing because at one point you're on a sailing ship and you are actually flying over London. You can look over the side, look down, and see London at night. You see London Bridge. You see lights on in the buildings. You see cars with their headlights going over the bridge. And that absolutely fascinated me. So that set me on this path, this desire to start recreating small towns. So I then uh, graduated from Legos and actually started buying mat board and balsa wood and actually creating custom scaled models. My senior year in high school, I was given the opportunity to do an independent study, which basically meant for a year I could uh, do whatever I wanted. I had to pick a project, but uh, they, they gave me total free reign to choose anything I wanted to. They already knew I liked to make models, so it came as no surprise to them when I decided that I was going to make a model of the uh, former downtown municipal airport. So for a year, every day in class, I embarked on making this model recreation and it was a fully detailed model, interior and exterior. And the school actually pay, gave me a $750 budget to make that model. And I remember at the time thinking, holy cow, $750. I spent most of it on small scale cars to populate the parking lot. I got it done, it was big enough that it had to be moved in three pieces. Entered it in the Shawnee Mission District Research and Development Forum in 1983 and won Best of Show which was quite an honor when I looked around at some of these fantastic furniture pieces that were built by people my age and younger, and yet I won Best of Show. That really uh, gave me the confidence to consider making models uh, for a living. About five years ago, uh, I found myself with a lot of free time. My children were grown and for the most part out of the house. And I really wanted to get back into model building. I had kind of put it off to one side for probably a decade. Um, but I also wanted to take it to that next level. I've never wanted to stop learning. There's always new techniques, there's new tools. Uh, so I, I just have constantly been wanting to learn. Making miniatures, model buildings, uh, I find it actually very relaxing, very calming for me. After a day at work, nothing uh, gives me greater pleasure than going downstairs after dinner and for about two hours, tinkering with plastic and glue. Uh, it, it just, uh, it, it's very soothing to me. It lets me unwind. Um, I also have found that uh, I, there's quite an audience for miniatures and in particular the the buildings that I have been creating for the past number of years. I of late have tended to do a lot of what we call vintage roadside Americana. A lot of structures that a lot of us remember from our childhood but are no longer around today. Uh, examples would be Howard Johnson's restaurants and motels, uh, the good old Stuckey's along the interstate, Shakey's Pizza, which many of us enjoyed in our youth. Um, I found that producing those, uh, I was almost shocked how many people it tapped into their nostalgia. And uh, when I put these pictures on Facebook, they were going, oh my goodness, it's like a light came on in memory. I forgot all about that. Next thing you know, uh, I've made a whole bunch of new friends who have uh, encouraged me and motivated me to do more. Uh, about two years ago, I became associated with the Overland Park Historical Society, and one of their long-range goals was to create a space that would lure the public in and introduce the Historical Society to them and hopefully grow membership. We are now uh, on the cusps of uh, achieving that, 
the historical society is going to have an, uh, a space inside the remodeled King Louis that the county purchased a few years ago. I suspect a good number of my models will be in and out of, that, of our space there. There'll be a rotating exhibit, if you will. My Stuckies is going to be taken down to Eastman, Georgia, where it will uh, have a permanent home in a Stuckies museum that's underway in Eastman. That will be uh, a fun trip, hopefully uh, later this summer. I uh, have a long list of projects I would like to do if uh, time and the Lord permit me to. A lot of Johnson County locations that are no longer around. I think that'll be uh, something that will continue to bring excitement and uh, people coming to our space in the King Louis building. Uh, everybody asks me, Brad, can you make a model of the Glenwood Theater, for instance? And I tell them, uh, well, I will certainly give it a shot. That one could be a little challenging, but uh, I always want to continue to grow and expand. I'm up to the challenge. So that's on my to-do list for before the end of this year. I hope to accomplish that model. I am uh, soon to be the president of the Leewood Rotary Club, and we're a very philanthropic club. We uh, are all about community service. And uh, I, a few years ago, I started uh, creating dollhouses or renovating dollhouses. I have found that there's a great market for dollhouses. And so I try my best to make at least one dollhouse every year that is part of uh, our fundraiser every year in Rotary. And uh, typically it, it, it brings in a nice price and we in turn use that money to help a variety of children's charities here in Kansas City. I hope that I will uh, be able to make models uh, till the day I drop. <laughs> Who knows when that will be? I do know that um, I have some physical limitations that are probably going to get worse as I get older, so I want to make the most of the time that I have now to make these structures. Um, most of them will end up somewhere other than my home, but I would like to make a few that will be, and they'll probably be dollhouses, but something that I can leave as a legacy to my future grandchildren. I think that uh, that would be a, a lasting memory of their grandfather. What I found most interesting is making the models of the uh, nostalgic vintage roadside Americana, like the Howard Johnsons. As I, as I dive in, I, I first design it. I don't have plans to work from, so I have to create them from scratch. But as I get into it, I, find I lose all sense of time, and I start thinking back uh, to the memories of my parents taking me to Howard Johnsons, and my mind is racing with nostalgic memories, and before I know it, four hours have gone by, and uh, it's, a, it's a very rewarding experience physically, emotionally, and uh, it seems to really touch a nostalgic nerve with a lot of people as well.